last year I had a two million dollar loss that you know excessive use of leverage that loss wiped out almost two years of my profit psychologically it was hard I cried now I that day me as a 39 year old in that time I cried Welcome everyone back to the Words of Wisdom podcast. We have a very, very special guest with us today. He has a PhD. He is a number one selling author. Uh, he's a day trader and he recently climbed Mount Everest, uh, which is absolutely incredible. And we are joined by the one, the only, Mr. Andrew Aziz. Well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'm just a big fan of your content uh, or amazing. And uh, yeah, excited to talk to you and your audience. It's my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. And I know that you, you literally traveled in this morning. So I appreciate the, uh, the effort and the sacrifice of, uh, of the rest. Oh, no, thank you. It was a good flight. And I love Dubai. I travel here a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to uh, talk to you. Yeah, definitely. Same. And how we like to start is just to kind of get a brief introduction to you how you got to where you are today you can be as brief for as long as you want and we just take it from there yeah for sure i you know i grew up as an engineer so mm -hmm. i went to school uh getting my master's uh, in engineering and mm -hmm. bachelor's and then i went to canada for phd and i did my phd in engineering mm -hmm. and i did work for a couple of years uh, but i got laid off from my job okay. and uh, i got some money saved up and some severance package and i started messing around with the financial market mm -hmm. uh, i got some you know beginner's luck made some money in the beginning and with these penny stocks and I said whoa that's easy and then mm -hmm. I started losing money uh, then I realized that it's not as easy as <laughs> I was thinking so I went to back to work and while I was working mm -hmm. I started messing around and uh, you know learning trading and the, the time zone that I was trading was really nice uh, mm -hmm. because I live in the west coast of North America and mm -hmm. Pacific time zone so market opens at 6 30 so I was you know trading in 6 30 until 9 you know 8 30 9 mm -hmm. and then I go to work yeah and you know just last 10 11 years I've been trading and messing around with the financial market and I love it no definitely definitely and it's interesting you say about obviously working wise so did you work and, and trade for a long period of time oh absolutely yeah mm -hmm. i'm a big advocate of part-time trading mm -hmm. you know full-time trading you're know, getting income from uh, trading is mm -hmm. very very psychologically difficult for mm -hmm. uh, traders uh, you know every loss you start associating yourself with the loss and mm -hmm. uh, but having an, a separate source of income it's very 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 uh helpful for your trading mm -hmm. uh, i had the job until 2019 oh, wow. uh, even though my trading was really good and i had other source of income but mm -hmm. i still you know kept the job until really in 2019 i decided to quit the uh, corporate job oh, yeah. and i highly recommend to all the traders that i'm uh, coaching and working with mm -hmm. is uh, just keep keep something on the side mm -hmm. trade for one or two hours depending on what you trade you know forex is a little bit different from a stock market yeah. we trade mostly stock market so the time that you're trading is very limited to the first two hours yeah. that Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, just trade for one or two hours and then go back to business, professional career, or whatever mm -hmm. that you have. Definitely, and it's, it's definitely a different take to what you see most people try and promote. You know, they're trying to rush, they're trying to say, you know, go full time and, and have freedom in your life. Um, so how did you sort of battle that, you know, and sort of ignore those sort of voices? Um, well, I needed the money first. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 the most important thing. Like, yeah. I needed to uh, have an extra source of income. Mm -hmm. But when the money is not an issue anymore, right now, when money really became not a problem, then I realized that I need to do something with my life. Mm -hmm. Like, trading is good, but you know, it's not really that much satis satisfying. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you are having a career or you have a business or mm -hmm. something that you take care of, it serves your soul. But yeah. as a trader, okay, so you quickly scalp something and you have money in your bank account. What else? What else would you want to do with your mm -hmm. life? Uh, I travel a lot. Yeah. So that's one thing that after I become uh, independent financially, I started traveling and seeing the world the way that I wanted to. Yeah. Um, but I never really thought about just working full time, like nine hours behind the screen, just yeah. trade for the sake of money. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want to enjoy your time. That's and it. freedom. Because, yeah, exactly, freedom. So, like, you get into trading for freedom, and then most people kind of enslave themselves to the charts. That's which really doesn't really make sense, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but you mentioned earlier in terms of, like, you traveled to uh, Vancouver to do your PhD. But before that, you were growing up in Iran, right? Yes, that's correct, yeah. And so what was, like, the difference there? Because, obviously, you grew up a large chunk of your life in Iran, and then going straight over to Vancouver. I can imagine, obviously, culturally, there would be huge differences. Huge difference, yeah, huge cultural difference. Mm -hmm. Like, Iran is one of those countries that is... Uh, 
uh, you know, social is very different from West because mm-hmm. we don't have that much of uh, interaction with uh, Western countries. Mm-hmm. So it was a huge culture shock for me. But I was lucky mm-hmm. that I went directly to the university. Yes. And that five years of university, four years of university really helped me transition mm-hmm. from a, you know, a culture that I came from Iran to a Western culture. Mm-hmm. My English, yes, I had the test exam that mm-hmm. passed for the university. But again, it wasn't very you know, fluent and very convenient. Mm-hmm. And again, the university is an environment that people are very understanding and help you grow yeah but if I was going directly into the you know job market it would have mm. been very very stressful I can imagine no yeah. definitely and the PhDs PhDs like what was the thought process about acquiring a PhD because obviously that is something that is extremely difficult that's a good question uh, because um, uh, PhD essentially what PhD is about is mm-hmm. that they give you an unknown topic mm-hmm that you have a little bit of a background, but not necessarily very close to the topic. And they ask you to find the problem, define the problem, and then research on it, Mm -hmm. answer some questions, and then defend it, publish it. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm a chemical engineer, but my PhD was a topic that was completely unknown to me. Like I was an oil and gas engineer, Mm -hmm. and then in PhD, they gave me, okay, we want you to work on the hydrogen uh, electric cars. Mm So it has a little bit of a background, but completely new. So I had four years of thinking about it and then come up with experiments, you mm-hmm. know, testing. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I had to defend it. So write papers mm-hmm. and p- write a dissertation and defend it in front of the examination committee. Mm-hmm. But what happened was that I learned that PhD is not only a degree, it's the critical thinking that goes beyond any unknown uh, mm-hmm. things that uh, put in, you know, in front of you. Mm-hmm. And that served me really well in life. Because trading was exactly the same situation. After I came out and I said, okay, I want to learn trading. So I started researching it online, YouTube, websites, books, and I started practicing it. And at the end of the day, I actually wrote the book of what I learned during that process. Mm -hmm. So exactly like a PhD. So that skill helped me to, you know, start a new topic. And even if today you tell me, hey, there's a new topic for you, like let's say, for example, psychedelics or something. Mm-hmm. And can you do research on it? That that process of PhD, you know, helps me to find a new, uh, you know, unknown and uh, learn about it. Definitely. So would you say that the process of the PhD is makes you ask questions and makes you ask questions that you probably wouldn't normally try and think of? And not only that, then go beyond that to find, try and find answers solutions to those questions yeah exactly that's the, essentially they train you to be a researcher mm-hmm. of an unknown topic mm-hmm. that topic that i published in paper in ubc or at the at university is not really that crazy topic and mm-hmm. i don't think it, i solved the world problems mm-hmm. but it was a good training for me that i became a researcher yes so the whole process was learn how to critically think about unknown topics and tackle unknown things definitely and as part of that process as well as you said experiments and there's a, i would imagine a lot of failing in that process absolutely yeah so a lot of uh, failures a lot of unknowns a lot of back and forth a lot of simulation mm-hmm. very si- similar to the, uh, trading you know That's when the, yeah. you know the trading is very unknown for a lot of people mm-hmm. they have no idea about how trading works yes but they start learning and then they start doing a simulation and then they start experimenting a small mm-hmm. size and see what's happening and then they look for the result and then they go back into the loop practicing it and make it better and better yeah. and better so mm-hmm. that's the same concept so for yourself actually studying helped you with your trading journey i think as an engineer i started thinking very critically and uh, very analytical Mm -hmm. like everything uh, you know like a b things like if this then has to be like that Mm -hmm. so engineers tend to think very analytical doesn't necessarily it's a very uh, important and this you know requirement for traders Mm -hmm. but i think generally helped me to figure out things and see why it happens like that and you know finding these cause and relationships mm-hmm. uh, between things like price and volume and yes. you want to see in charts is also come some sort of an engineering you know uh, uh, problem that you try to figure out definitely definitely and, when, and as you said you first got into it you had some beginners look what was that like what was that uh, scenario uh so there was uh, <laughs> there was a uh, there was one uh, penny stock, a mm-hmm. pharmaceutical company, and I had no idea what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I had no proper broker. I had no proper platform. Mm-hmm. I had no p- 
proper commission structure. It was a web-based, uh, you know, broker that I had to pay ten dollars per ticket, mm. and then I had to enter my phone numbers to enter in and exit. And <laughs> it was just it was a fast process, uh, horrible. But I started buying, and I didn't know that I have to take a smaller share size. So I started buying a fifty thousand dollar of a penny a stock that somebody mentioned in a chat room, <laughs> and then I started buying that, and then press buy, and then not, nothing happened. I refresh the page, and it's wow, it's significantly higher. Sell, 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 sell. Mm -hmm. So I made really good money on that, but it was absolutely pure luck. It could yeah. be completely go the other way and just pretty much losing my account. Mm -hmm. uh, that beginner luck hooked me up in this. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. with the one one click you can make money. Mm -hmm. But it didn't take very long to realize that okay, that's an illusion. You know, you can yeah. really uh, lose that mm -hmm. really fast. Have you ever read The Alchemist? I have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you know there's a bit in The Alchemist which talks about beginner's luck? It says yeah. you'll be tested essentially. You, everyone experiences beginner's luck. So you experience what's possible, and then after that, you'll be tested to see if you actually truly want that end, end result that you just experienced. Mm -hmm. Would you say that was very similar for yourself? Exactly. It's, mm -hmm. You know, in, in Alchemist, Paulo Coelho says that mm -hmm. the universe gives you a taste of success yes. and to see how it is, and then see if you can actually push it through your, that you know, personal legend that you mm -hmm. will want to follow that. Uh, it's a great book. I read okay. it after this situation. But, oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, did, did, when you read it, did it click back? Like, oh. Yeah, a lot of uh, part of my life, actually, in that book, uh, click with, uh, mm -hmm. with that. But I recently read that book in a few years ago, but yeah, uh, it's a very good point. So you, you wrote your own book, as you said, a number one selling book as well. When doing that process, I know you mentioned already on, on previous podcasts too, and even today that the PhD process helped you to do that. Did it also inspire you to do that as well? Absolutely, yeah. So the PhD inspired me because first of all, when I uh, wrote the first book in the first edition, I was not a great trader. Mm. And the book was not a great book. It was a very small booklet. Okay. And then about what I learned about mm -hmm. in the process was three chapters, very short chapters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote it because there was no other book to mm -hmm. walk me through that. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the retail trading, active trading was kind of kind of a starting around this 2012, yeah. 13. And there wasn't mm -hmm. a lot of, book. there was some textbook books on technical yeah. analysis, mm -hmm. mathematical, like but they were not really helpful. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what broker to use, what mm -hmm. platform I use, what indicator I should use. Mm -hmm. So because there wasn't anything uh, as a book, I decided to write that a small book. Mm -hmm. And I published it, self-published it, uh, and uh, turned out to be a good book. And then I constantly you know, updated in the you know editions uh, over the year. Mm -hmm. Then as I became a better trader, I added more material on that, removed the, you know, mm -hmm. the outdated material and keep adding into that. I plan to continue doing that because I become a better trader. Market is also changing yes. every year, so mm -hmm. it's better you know, to update that. Yeah. But the PhD inspired me for sure. And, and what would you say, because people might hear that and say, like, oh, you weren't a good trader when you wrote a book. So what were your thoughts uh, around that? I've never uh, claimed to be a good trader, mm -hmm. even in that book. Mm -hmm. I was sharing, even in the introduction, I was saying that I'm sharing my, my journey mm. uh, with everybody. And even up to date, I know I'm not a really great trader. They're mm. way better trader than me. Mm. What I'm doing is I'm sharing my journey with everybody. If you mm -hmm. relate to that, if you take even one uh, point from it, Good for you. If not, mm -hmm. just there are so many other traders in there. You've interviewed a lot of amazing traders, mm -hmm. probably better than me, making more money than mm -hmm. me. But this is my journey mm -hmm. in, in my YouTube, in my book, in my social media. That's my journey, and I hope that I inspire you. Definitely. No, definitely. Yeah. Would you say, though, that having the success of the book kind of inspired you to push on and, and become a better trader? It's time to make the biggest announcement we've ever made on the podcast. You guys have been asking for it, and we've finally done it. We are launching the Words of Wisdom Patreon. Now, as part of the Patreon, you are going to get every single week exclusive podcast episodes. Every single month, I will be hosting live calls where you can ask your questions to me directly. We will also be doing Q&As with industry-leading traders such as Uma Ashraf, Omar Agag, Life of Paladin, Jade Cap FX, and so many more. I'll also be doing huge giveaways every single week for Patreon members only. And finally, Finally, I have partnered with the top companies in the industry, such as Social Trader Tools, Magic Keys, and TradeZella, to bring you the biggest discounts, saving you hundreds of dollars per month. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, and I know what you're thinking, but it's just $15 a month. It's just 50 cents a day. And with that, you're going to get exclusive episodes, live calls, Q&As, giveaways, and the discounts that I have secured for you. With the discounts I've secured, I'm basically paying you to join. Learn from the best. Join the number one trading podcast in the world. Join the Patreon. The link is in the description below, and I will see you in there. The Skilled Challenge is finally here. 
Enjoy the lowest profit targets in the industry through our skilled challenge, which is only requiring a 6% profit target. Yes, you heard that right. Not only that, but enjoy 85% profit split as well as a 125% challenge free refund, all part of the best product on the market. You get to choose your drawdown between 8 or 10% for our toggle option. So you choose how much drawdown you'd like. Take advantage of the skill challenge today. Absolutely, yeah. So having a book also helped me to uh, people reach out to me mm-hmm. and asking questions. And a lot of them, you know, at the beginning, they were coming to my chat room and they were seeing that oh, I make fifty dollars, hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and they knew I'm not a crazy, amazing trader. But mm-hmm. we started becoming a community. And now that I s- uh, realize that people are coming to me and look at me and how I trade, ask questions and hold me accountable, mm-hmm. made me a better trader. Mm-hmm. So I knew that I can't do crazy things because people are watching me mm-hmm. and i've told them hey not to average down get this up out of your trade and if i don't stick to my rule i lose all of my credibility mm-hmm. so yes the community helped me to become a better trader okay. book held me accountable mm-hmm. to be a better trader definitely definitely because you could easily be a case where instead you'd make a different decision where it's like oh i've got the success I, i'm just gonna go you know sort of go all in on that and just make more products more services instead of okay i can level up my trading off the back of this have that as accountability instead yeah. and it's, it's a big thing and but the learning process for you as you said like back then the retail space and especially online as well and, and material wise it wasn't really vast it wasn't really available so what did you use to learn a uh, youtube mm-hmm. there was a there was a lot of uh, youtube material mm-hmm. uh, i know one of the sources that was really good was uh, warrior trading ross mm-hmm. cameron mm-hmm. i have a lot of respect for him there was a lot of uh, really good material mm-hmm. early back in 2013 14 15 he was publishing mm-hmm. and there was a couple of other youtube channels that they're not active and i was learning from them and uh after that again same as phd you get some basics and then it's the, the rest is self-learning mm-hmm. you know and then i realized oh there is something called the vvap what you made at average price mm-hmm. none of those youtube videos were talking about it and then i soon started realizing it that oh it's actually useful because i read it in another book that vvap shows the balance of the power between buyers and sellers in today mm-hmm. and then i that, again that self-experimentation through that then i realized that mm-hmm. um there was no book uh, in the way that we needed that Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a lot of online material available back in 2013, mm-hmm. 12, 14, you know, 12, yeah. yeah. And what, what do you say to the traders now who have such a vast amount? Because back then you still had some, but I'm sure it was probably limited. Now it's probably thousands of YouTube channels that are available with yeah. information covering absolutely everything. And yet traders still seem to struggle within themselves and their journey even with this vast amount of information. So what would you say to those traders out there who maybe are just starting out or still sort of finding their feet? Uh, that's a good question. I think, uh, um, you know, there is something called a uh, paralysis by analysis. Yes. When you start thinking too much about things, then mm-hmm. you, don't, you, you don't know what to do. There is a lot of good contents right now out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the quality of the contents are amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you have to really select uh, one path yes. and play around with that around that path. just mm-hmm. don't j- don't jump uh, all the time from one mm-hmm. instrument to another one from one trading style to another one just do an early examination of what you think is reasonable mm-hmm. and stick with that mm-hmm. like for example i never traded crypto mm-hmm. you know crypto had really been busy time in 2018 and mm-hmm. then later in 2020 and 2021 and a lot of money were to be made, but I never got into that because mm-hmm. stock market day trading was really working for me. Mm-hmm. And I never had the temptation. I had the temptation, but I said, well, okay, I'm not going to mess around with something that I, it's not, but it's working and I just focus on that. Mm-hmm. So you select what you want to trade, Forex, crypto, stocks, mm-hmm. uh, options, futures, whatever that it, you, you think is, be, you know, and it really depends on how much money you have, what time of the day mm-hmm. you have, you know, where you're living in the world and what instruments are available to you. Select that and then stick to that. Find one or two good education, follow them uh, and uh, practice in that area. Jumping over, mm-hmm. people are jumping over to find that secret sauce. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You ha- Self-learning, you just need to have time to mm-hmm. really get to that. That's my recommendation to not to get this uh, paralysis by analysis or yeah. this they, they call it uh, this uh, decision fatigue or something when yeah. you have so many options if ahead of you you get the fatigue yeah definitely 
No, definitely. Was that something you had to learn along your journey as well? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I've done all the beginner's mistakes. Mm -hmm. And to, up to date, I make really bad mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, like last year, I had a $2 million loss that, you oh. know, excessive use of leverage. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, something that we always tell people don't do it, but mm -hmm. I myself did it. And it's something that you always have to be careful of uh, not making those mm -hmm. mistakes in trading. How do you handle that then? So a $2 million loss, how uh, do you, especially when you're within your profitable journey? How do you handle that psychologically? Yeah, so my uh, trading really wasn't crazy until 2020 okay. when the pandemic happened. Like mm. $500 a day was a really good day. Pandemic, everything became crazy. Like the volatility of the market and mm -hmm. then my account went up. So that loss wiped out almost two years of my profit. Oh, wow. uh, so it was crazy, but it, it wasn't, I wasn't negative. It wasn't wiping me completely out of mm -hmm. the game. But uh, psychologically, it was hard mm -hmm. and I cried. Now, I, that day, me as a 39 year old in that time, I cried. And my brother, which is my business partner, he came, you know, I said, don't worry about it. You know, you make it back in the next two, three years. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything crazy because mm -hmm. that's the first thing that you, you, when you have a bad loss, you mm -hmm. want to do something crazy to make it back next day or next week. Yeah. And it was really assuring me, okay, how much money you have? See, you know, if you make this money consistently in the next two years, you probably make it back and look at it as an, uh, things. And you start, uh, you know, m uh, human mind uh, is very resilient. Mm -hmm. You know, you start uh, handling losses. Like everybody have lost parents and family members. Mm -hmm. And you see it at the beginning is very hard, but your mind really adjusts itself. And you just have to make sure that you don't do anything crazy in mm -hmm. that uh, time zone. But yeah, no, uh, it was uh, painful and very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. As someone who has a book and tell people what to do and not to do, doing that in front of everybody live, thousands of people see that. Mm -hmm. And uh, very embarrassing. But, you know, again, you move on. Would you say that though embarrassing, it creates like a resilience because you have, it's not something you have to hide. It's not something that you have to be ashamed of because it's already there, it's in the public view. Yes, in the moment, obviously it will be very painful and, and uh, extremely, yeah, as you say, embarrassing and you know, you'd feel hurt in a way. But then because it's already happened now, it's you know, it, in a sense of relief, a sense of closure can happen instantly rather than I need to worry that someone might find this out. Does that make sense? That's, that's true. Like uh, they say there was something that they say like, uh, a truth makes you free or something like yes. that. Like when you accept that, okay, I messed it and you confess to that, you mm -hmm. it's like this, this weight is out of your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. When I did that mistake and everybody said, yes, guys, I messed up. Mm -hmm. And now I just, I can move on past it. But if you, mm -hmm. like in having a loss, uh, if you're having a trading, bad trading, you, you don't want to get a stopped out and mm -hmm. just stress out and anxiety. But as soon as you get a stopped out, it's just, you, there is a huge anxiety out of your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's very important to accept, mm -hmm. accepting loss at the beginning, accepting that you messed up, accepting your mistakes mm -hmm. help you to become better. Mm -hmm. Don't accepting it, it just waste your energy, waste your money and everything. Yeah. In, in trading and in life. Definitely. What would you say your key lesson from that loss was? I think the key trading lesson was, again, excessive use of leverage. Mm -hmm. Leverage is a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when market really good is in your favor, leverage is good. But, you know, when that unseen thing happens, mm -hmm. you know, that the double-edged sword that they say. Mm -hmm. So, and I always was talking about it. Like, oh, hey, guys, don't use uh, excessive leverage. Accept the loss. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you get uh, stuck into that and that, you know, I didn't accept the loss, didn't accept the loss, didn't accept the mm -hmm. loss, started, you know, changing story in my mind. Oh, the trade's going to work. No, 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 I'm going to hold it overnight. I'm going to hold it another week. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, How long did you hold that trade for? That one was uh, four months. You had a four And months? I added to that, yeah. Wow. It was uh, starting as a day trade. Yeah. And I said, okay, I'm going to buy this. And then it went down. I bought more. It went down. I bought more. Came back up to my break-even point. I could come out of it with a break even I said no okay now it's gonna go up went back down keep going down and you know I was out of buying power I couldn't add anything to that and just kept that and eventually and usually that happens you usually sell it right at the bottom mm -hmm. as soon as you sell it it comes back yeah. it always happens like yeah. and yeah that, that happens did it happen this time? yeah exactly yeah it just bounced back just adds uh, salt to the wound that's, as they say yeah. that's crazy that's mm -hmm. that's exactly it's, sometimes I think that the universe is messing with you specifically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you buy it right at the time you mm -hmm. sell at the bottom right at the bottom that happened to me I, it went yeah. down actually you know b bounced back but it you know it significantly went below my stopping point okay. and uh, even today that trade i'm looking at it is you know i think i bought that at 90 i sold it at 38 mm -hmm. with the loss 
a lot of shares. We're talking about millions of share, uh, d- dollars. And now it's trading at 25. Oh, wow. So it's, it keeps going on. It could Does that give you some, some peace oh, and yeah. happiness? Fuck, I'm glad I got out of it, yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, handling something like that must have been interesting. What was life like in that four-month period then when you're holding this this position? You know, I, I didn't know that. But later, one of my friends, she told me that we were watching you every day mm-hmm. in the chat room. And we could see the suffering that you go through every day looking at that. Wow. Like, you know, I couldn't see it. I mean, my, mm-hmm. it wasn't a great time. I had some fights with my business partners. And yeah. I didn't know why, but it was just that, that pressure on me mm-hmm. was dragging me. And later, one of my friends uh, told me that, yeah, we were looking at you and we were seeing how frustrated you become and mm-hmm. you know how every morning you could see your suffering even mm-hmm. though you were trading other stuff but that pain was with you yeah it was just being heightened and on edge exactly yeah the trading journey eh? the trading, trading journey. journey but it's a beautiful journey like mm-hmm. uh, you know these things happen but uh, you know I, I, your audience that are watching this it's an amazing journey mm-hmm. it teaches a lot about you mm-hmm. and I have to say trading gave me a lot a mm-hmm. lot of time a lot of uh, money uh, a lot of freedom. I mean, the last year I made a lot of those losses back and mm-hmm. I owe trading a lot. The financial markets, I, I owe them a lot. Mm-hmm. This is part of it, mm-hmm. you know, that's, you know, happens. So it, did, it, could, it didn't have to be like that dramatic. It was my mistake. Yes. No one is to blame except myself. Mm-hmm. Now that I look back at it, there was all the signals, all, it was so clear that I'm making that mistake. I just didn't see that. Yeah. How, how do you build that self-accountability? Because that's where I feel a lot of traders struggle. They will make a mistake similar, maybe not the same size, but you know, depend. It's all like relative to where they are in their journey. So that at that point in your journey, that was a huge chunk of size. While someone else might be in a similar, and I, I imagine a lot of the audience will be in a position where let's say five thousand dollars is their account size, and they lose the five thousand, right? So in terms of relative, you know, that's a similar situation. But they don't have that self accountability of I made the mistake. It was me rather than the market. You know, so for example, you know, like you said, where it will just take your stop and then rebound. You know, and I heard you say on a previous podcast that you don't believe in, uh, you know, like market makers hunting your stop losses, for example. But people use that. Mm-hmm. You know, they they will go through a similar situation, but they'll use that. They won't want the accountability. They'll put it onto something else. I've been targeted. So how did you build that self accountability? How, that's how conspiracy theory starts. Yeah. People cannot answer mm-hmm. the unknown to them. They start going into that. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that market makers cannot do this, but mm-hmm. I don't think that. My hundred shares of Tesla is, you mm-hmm. know, market makers are sitting to look at my hundred yeah. shares of Tesla. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, accountability, it's a lifestyle, I mm-hmm. think. I mean, the tr- self-discipline is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And it starts from the basic things, diet. Mm-hmm. Like everybody knows, everybody wants to be in shape. Everybody wants to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. But how many of us are actually, when have that beer and pizza in front of us, going to stop each other? Okay, not enough for me. I had this enough. And everybody knows sugar is bad. But mm-hmm. how many of us actually get into that? I think to become a successful trader, you have to build the habit of self-discipline and self accountability in every aspects of your life Mm -hmm. from waking up and putting your bed that's a very basic thing just putting your bed back Mm -hmm. doesn't if you don't do it nothing happens Mm -hmm. who cares because you're going to go back in there Mm -hmm. but just that self-discipline that okay i wake up and i put my bed back or i wake up i don't check my phone until 10 minutes after i'm really wake up not Mm -hmm. that i'm in bed checking the notification Mm -hmm. these small things matters you know you know get you through the life Mm -hmm. Um, another thing that I would say is uh, being around the community that holds you accountable. Mm. It doesn't have to be a 5,000 member community, just one person, mm-hmm. two person, having a, a small WhatsApp group, a small Discord channel, a small, small accountability. If you're in a bad trade, talk to someone. Hey, mm-hmm. I'm in this trade. What do you think I should do? And the other person probably don't say that you should buy or sell. Mm-hmm. The other person gives you a perspective. Well, it seems that it passes your stop loss. It seems that you have no plan anymore. If I were, I would have probably get out of it, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's it. I mean, that's the most that they can say. It's Mm -hmm. your responsibility and you have to make the decision. But having that person or a supportive group Mm -hmm. is very important. And most of the successful people have it. The Mm -hmm. mastermind group, the business groups, the mentors. It's not only for traders Mm -hmm. in all in all businesses are there. In that you know you have I'm sure you have I have still people in all aspects of life mm. I have a running coach yes that you know I'm running running is something that I do but mm. my coach is what you know through my watch 
see my performance mm-hmm. message me hey what well, today was good why did you skip th- you know yesterday or what, what happened you know that kind of thing there's accountability mm-hmm. through small groups very important so would you say do you still use some sort of uh, mentorship in other areas of your life that you're pursuing yeah, success in? For fitness, I do. Yes, um, uh, as I mentioned, I have a running coach. Yes, when I was climbing Mount uh, Everest, mm-hmm. I had a coach that wasn't next to me. It was you know some another country with constant communication. Mm-hmm. And when I was climbing mountain uh, Everest that you mentioned, I had a coach next to me, a Sherpa guide, okay. and the Sherpa was coming with me. He wasn't carrying me. He wasn't doing anything for me, mm-hmm. but he was there to help, you know, help me push, push. Yeah. And if I need any help, any questions, if I have doubts about it, uh, you know, I said, do you, you want to get into the Everest experience? Of course, course. <laughs> we have to. So when I climbed the Mount Everest, um, every climber, most of the climbers, like 99 percent climbers, mm-hmm. they bring one Sherpa Nepali guide with them. Yes. And the guide... Uh, uh, is an, usually an experienced climber mm-hmm. and have been before up there. They're from that region, yes. so their body is a little bit adjusted to the higher elevation, mm-hmm. and they come with you. They don't do anything for you mm-hmm. th- because they can't. You know, that elevation and cold and lack of oxygen, they can't do anything for mm-hmm. you except their companionship. Mm-hmm. They're just with you. Uh, they might have one extra bottle of oxygen for you just in case, yeah. but if you, th- something happens, they're not capable of doing anything. Mm-hmm. So what happened for me, I was near the summit, it was really cold, and I saw dead bodies. I started seeing near the one dead body, just someone that died last night. Wow. And uh, you know, I'll send you the picture if you want to maybe uh, post it in your uh, podcast. And I said, wow. And I was really afraid. I said, I, I'm not going to die here. I don't want to die here. It's mm-hmm. not worth it. And I looked at my Sherpa. I mean, we had the oxygen. And I said, I want to go back. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we can't talk in that environment with the wind and uh, oxygen. Yeah, signaling, and I said, go yeah. back mm-hmm. and signaling. And then my Sherpa looked at me and he, he realized that I saw that and I was scared. And he, he touched me and said, go, don't look at it. Go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. And then just that presence, just looking mm-hmm. at another person who's alive next to me and say, go, go. You know, you got it. Uh, just push me there. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't that guy, well, I would have probably panicked, like yes. run down, you know. Uh, but just having the companionship. Same as, you know, again, trading. You know, you have someone like that $2 million loss, my business partner and my brother, which mm-hmm. is also a trader, he was my companion. Hey, dude, you got it. Don't worry, but I'm here. We'll, we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Having that companion is very important. Do you feel like if you didn't have your brother or business partner, that's something you, know, you could have gone, continued down that path? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think that was my, uh, uh, like a checks and balance. You know, yeah. it's someone that got to tell you, hey, dude, you know, uh, and in all aspects of life, mm. uh, you have to have that person mm-hmm. that tells you. You know, I have some friends that I've mentioned them directly. Hey, guys, if I did anything crazy, you stop me. Mm-hmm. If I overate, you tell me. Hey, if I drank too much, you tell me. Mm-hmm. And you have to ask them because people usually, they're not nice. They're not yeah. telling you, yeah, you yeah. know, and uh, you have to figure it out yourself. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's good that my, if I drink too much, someone, okay, come here. Yeah, it's Andrew is enough, you know. Yeah. And f- because it comes from a confident, trusted person, yeah. you don't take it personal. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Everest. Why Everest? I, I like to challenge myself. Mm-hmm. I really, really like to challenge myself. It's a question that actually I'm asking myself to why. Like, <laughs> why are we climbing mountains in that environment? Mm-hmm. It's very expensive too. Uh, How much I, does it cost? Uh, I paid uh, $75,000 USD. Wow. Uh, plus, you know, almost with the flights and everything would be a seventy-five, eighty thousand mm. dollar. You can go cheaper, like fifty thousand dollar, depending on you know what level of things you're getting. Mm. And I, I, you know, I went you know a little bit faster, with a more expedited, so I flew to the base camp. So okay. it was a little bit expensive, mm. but yeah, it is in that range. Um, but uh, and it takes you know up to two months. You know, I did it in one month, but usually it's you know one month and a half because wow. you have to go up and down to body to climatize and yeah. wait for the uh, perfect time. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. It's a nice, nice car. Uh, <laughs> but I like to challenge myself. Mm-hmm. I think that's within my personality, mm-hmm. and I'm sure all the audience that are watching right now in this video and listening to this podcast, they have this personality because mm-hmm. they're tackling a very, very difficult task, mm-hmm. trading. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure they want the money, but also trading is very, very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's a very high performing field. So they have that personality that, okay, I'm gonna figure this thing out. I'm gonna mm-hmm. give my best at it. And uh, I've always done uh, in my life, try to challenge myself. Yeah. Coming to Canada, start running, 
climbing Everest, mm-hmm. start trading, changing my career. You mm-hmm. know, I like that. I like that challenge. Definitely. What, what's well, after Everest? What comes to mind next? Um, in terms of uh, trading, well, in terms of climbing, you can find more mountains. Mm-hmm. I kind of uh, haven't really got into finding another mountain. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can go climb K2 in Pakistan, which yeah. is probably most, most, most dangerous, more dangerous than Everest. Wow. But I want to I wanna go to Antarctica, okay. South Pole, Antarctica. Mm-hmm. There's, there's mountain there, really cool. Mm-hmm. I like to climb that. Uh, just to see the Antarctica. Mm-hmm. It doesn't belong to any country, but uh, there are companies that are operation, uh, they have wow. operation over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I want to continue running. I don't have any uh, specific mountaineering plan on my mind, but, but I agree that uh, most of the mountains are located. Uh, I don't How many have you done that. now? You've done a lot. I've done a lot, but mm-hmm. not enough. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about mountaineering though? What is it that, that intrigues you and, and makes you, you know, pushes you to do that? Yeah, because it pushes you through your. Uh, limits mm. you know in 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 nobody runs up in the Everest you know you have to push mm-hmm. mentally and physically mm-hmm. it's mostly the conquer of the mind you have to push yourself mm-hmm. you know overcome your fears mountain humbles you because shows you, you how insignificant you are mm-hmm. and how much you know you need to push yourself climbing big mountains mm-hmm. and you have to push it nobody is happy climbing a mountain mm-hmm. they're pushing but enjoying the process of growth and pushing. um th- and it's beautiful. Like mm-hmm. mountains are beautiful, in my opinion. Especially when you go into the glaciers, high mountains. Just the, the landscape is beautiful. Yes. As beautiful as you know, you go into Maldives or mm-hmm. you know there are beaches. It's mm-hmm. different nature. It's beautiful. Yeah. Do you ever find a sense of peace when you're on top of the mountains? Absolutely. The pure mm-hmm. mindfulness. Mm-hmm. You know, we all talk about meditation, and mindfulness. The pure mindfulness that I experienced was, uh, you know, the last day that near the summit, because mm-hmm. the environment is so harsh that the only thing that you can think of is to think nothing just just a step think about every step that you mm-hmm. go there is no thinking about my previous breakups money lost money gains uh, hate love mm-hmm. my previous relationship with my mom that nothing you just have to step by step absolutely mindfulness mm-hmm. and think about that if the mountain allows me to climb it or not if the next step is my last step or not mm-hmm. and that was a truth peace that I actually experienced in my life. I can imagine. So it's like the ultimate present moment. Ultimate present moment. There's one of my friends that told me there's another sport that you can get into that is uh, mountain biking. When you're coming down, oh you know, at that in that environment, the only thing mm. is you have to just absolutely be in the moment because there's no chance to think about it. But uh, yeah, ultimate uh, mindfulness mm. that uh, it's actually very peaceful. You know, in for that eight, ten, uh, eight to ten, uh, it took about ten hours mm-hmm. to go up. That ten hours was the most peaceful time of my life because, again, our mind constantly going through a lot yeah. of things up there. You don't have any energy; you just mm-hmm. have to focus on stillness. Wow. What was the view like? It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very, very nice. Again, I will send you a couple of pictures mm-hmm. if you want to post it in the video. It was really amazing, especially. Uh, on the sunrise because climbers start at night yes. that they try to come up by the sunrise mm-hmm. for two reasons first of all this mountain is safest during the night because all everything is frozen you know yes. during the day when the sun comes in you know it's, you know avalanches and mm-hmm. ice falls might happen plus you want to have enough time to come down mm-hmm. if you, you know, start in the morning get there by night then you might be very difficult to come down during the night mm-hmm. so the sunrise on Everest is really nice because the sun comes up and then there's a really beautiful picture of a you know a, a triangle mm-hmm. that is the shadow of the Everest and I have that oh. I love that picture it's in my Instagram I mm-hmm. love that picture so it's just like the whole world is shining up mm-hmm. except that one point until the sun comes up very beautiful okay. windy though uh, I, I i got to uh, summit in a very clear day but very windy unfortunately mm-hmm. so i didn't get to stay very long i had to come down yeah the, i'm guessing it was very dangerous conditions yeah very it's dangerous. dangerous anyway right just it's dangerous and cold mm-hmm. yeah a lot of people the most of the people who die is just exhaustion and altitude right. sickness even though you have ox- oxygen, the lack of oxygen, mm-hmm. you know, the body starts, you know, they say it's dead zone. The body mm-hmm. starts dying. Even you, know, you don't want to be in there for a very long time because mm-hmm. the organs still slowly fail. Uh, and uh, how many people have actually climbed Everest then? In total or in that in that year? It, well, in total. Do you know? I think in total something about four to 5,000 people wow. in the last, uh, you know, f- seven years that uh, started climbing. My the, the year that I climbed it was about uh, I mean this year 2023 I think about 400 people climbed it. Wow! And How about does it make tw- you feel? 
you know, to be in this almost like this accolade of a small group of out of eight billion people, a small group crazy of people. people. <laughs> 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 I don't. I don't give. It doesn't give me any specific uh, advantage. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of climbers that they don't want to climb me or they cannot afford to climb me. That yeah. doesn't mean that I'm better. Mm -hmm. I happen to have the free time and money to climb it. Yeah. It doesn't really give me any privilege, but uh, uh, it's personally gives me a really good self-confidence that yeah. I did it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not better than you that I did it, but I'm better than my previous version because that's I it. did yeah. it. That's what it's all yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. And then I know, unfortunately, I, know I saw your post today. Uh, one of, Someone you knew, unfortunately, uh, passed away due to an avalanche. And, you know, having to, you know, being a mountaineer yourself, you know, probably planning to do other mountains in the future. When you hear that news, does it make you think anything in terms of continuing that pursuit? Yeah, that's a very good question. This is actually the third close friend oh, wow. that I uh, lost uh, in the mountain. Uh, the first one was in 2010. The another one was in 2012. Mm. And then this one was three, third close friend that they died in the mountain. Uh, and it's really frightening mm -hmm. because all of them, all three were better than me wow. and more experienced than me. Wow. And when they happened to them and they were not doing anything crazier than I've done, like mm -hmm. they've done exactly the same thing that I would do. So always uh, remind me that, uh, you know, life is too short and there's one decision mm -hmm. you're, you know, or one moment away from not being in this planet mm -hmm. and uh, humbles me again reminds me of that don't take life too seriously just be happy live mm -hmm. in the moment you know don't think about the past because mm -hmm. it gives you regret and don't think about future because it gives you anxiety just mm -hmm. live in the moment um, but I move on really fast because they died doing what they love yeah and it's a nice thing mm -hmm. you know die dying doing what you love mm -hmm. I think there is some proud to that. I, 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 I wish, yeah. you know, I, I hope that I die doing what I love in <laughs> that moment. Definitely. No, I think there's no better way to go than doing what you love. Exactly. Because unfortunately, so many of us in this world or so many people in this world don't get that opportunity. Exactly. You know? And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously it's such a, it's a unique situation, especially it shows you how many people actually free people obviously you know it shows you how many people actually do pass away doing mountaineering you know because mm -hmm. i guess when you're not within the circles you won't hear about it as much you know we always hear about you know everest that there's you know, people have passed on and their bodies do their bodies end up staying there i've heard yeah at the, at the very high elevation yes mm -hmm. uh, if they die in the lower elevation it's possible to recover them but when they're very close to that you know, the higher yeah, one the, is just not possible it's, um, it's impossible the helicopters mm -hmm. can't go mm -hmm. and you know you, nobody can really put anybody back course, to come yeah. down yeah Wow. And then in terms of your journey, like you said there, you talked about being in the present moment. It humbles you, you know, these experiences. And yet you're a trader, right? And humble and trading don't always mix. We see within the industry, right? We see a lot of people, they get their success and then they're very much flaunting, you know, in, in a really elevated lifestyle. You know, what, what was your journey been in or experience been or decision making been uh, when you've elevated through your trading journey and obviously financially you know, elevated too? Yeah, uh, it's uh, I think that it's the money situation is uh, when you get the money, money gives you, you know, power to do anything that you wish. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, boosts the com boosts the confidence or an ego. Mm -hmm. um, that certainly happened to me as well. Uh, and you've got to really be careful about the psychology of money and how you can handle mm -hmm. uh, you money. Uh, but market humbles you mm -hmm. as a trader. Like it did humble me last year. Like mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I was feeling invincible. Like mm -hmm. not, I, I figured this thing out and then I'm ju it's just forever I can make money. And then ah, that slap from the market that notes sit down, and, you know, you can like anyone else can, you know, one bad trade away from blowing up your account. Mm -hmm. So it happened to me, this happened to me very early mm -hmm. and I'm glad that. If I was making that mistake later in the life and I was near retirement and I have that such a bad loss, it would have been a disaster. Mm -hmm. And that happens to people. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy that I actually got this lesson very early in my life mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, I don't I make that mistake. Um, humble, you know, the key to, cons to uh, you know, consistently making money in the market is the humbleness. Mm -hmm. You know, I, in 2020, after the pandemic, I've seen so many traders coming with the courses, with the Lamborghini pictures and everything. But, you know, after two years, like a lot of them are gone. And mm -hmm. only certain group of the people who were really sticking to their principles mm -hmm. 
of uh, you know discipline and you know humbleness and everything they are they are the ones that stay mm-hmm. and you know that wave of uh, you know robin hood millionaires it just mm-hmm. kind of went away because you know that was just beginner's luck or just the, yeah. you know a bubble definitely and would you say a lot of them may have had the beginner's luck and then instantly use those finances to you know basically have higher expenses and therefore when that beginner's luck was finished now they've got this lifestyle that they can't afford Absolutely, like mm-hmm. you know, people are buying Dodge coin at five cents and they're selling it at sixty cents, mm-hmm. and they were asking them, "Well, what are you doing?" No, you don't understand. This is trade, good trading. Like they were not really trading; they were riding a wave. Mm-hmm. I remember that uh, there, I had a friend in uh, in Switzerland, and mm-hmm. there was a guy, there was a kid. According to him, there was a kid that flew from Dubai, bought his Lamborghini to ship it back to Dubai because so much money, and then. You know, th- that was the situation. The people were riding a bubble, mm-hmm. and but they were thinking they're good traders. When they were asking them, okay, why did you buy that six cents? And, you know, what is that? What was your signal? What was your entry? They had no answer. Mm-hmm. What was your stop loss? They had no answer. Mm-hmm. You know, they had no plan. They were just riding a, a wave, and mm-hmm. they were lucky. Um, and that's not consistent. Yes. You know, again, you can make, you know, money, and that's financial market always messes up with you. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you get something. It shows you that taste of success. Yes. But, uh, you know, it will take you away. It will take you away. Faster. <laughs> Faster, Faster yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Would you say, though, as you just said there about a plan, would you say consistent trading requires a plan, a game plan? Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to tell you about the best trading tool on the market, TradeZella. The reason why TradeZella is the number one trading tool that every trader needs is because you can do backtesting, automated journaling, trade replay, in-depth analytics and so much more and the greatest part about tradezella is that it's all automated all you have to do is connect your mt4 and mt5 it will pull all your data onto the dashboard you can add playbooks you can just add notes you can add images from your trades and you can get the insights that is necessary for you to progress as a trader now tradezella is for absolutely everyone Whether you're a crypto trader, whether you're a Forex trader, whether you trade prop firms, it is for absolutely everyone. And that is why thousands of traders have signed up using my link here through the podcast. Make sure you use the code RIZ10 for 10% off your monthly subscription or WOR for 20% off your yearly subscription. The link is in the description below. And let's get back to the episode. Absolutely. I think uh, this is something that we call it a trade book mm-hmm. uh, or playbook. You know, yes. uh, you know, Mike Bluff, you're, uh, my mentor, is, calls it playbook. We call it trade book. Mm-hmm. Every trade that you take has to be part of a trade book. Mm-hmm. And trade book has to have a name. Mm-hmm. You can have any name. Like this is a five minute opening range breakout. This is a double bottom reversal. That is a mountain pass. You know, one of our traders have something called mountain pass. Inspired from you. That's <laughs> yeah, well, it's essentially a reversal. You know, you see the top and two okay. tops, and then it's like a double bottom reversal, but he called it mountain pass. Mm-hmm. It's amazing because it gave a personality to that strategy. Yes. So every trade that you take, you have to say, this is this is strategy. Mm-hmm. If you can't say which strategy it is, then you shouldn't have taken that trade. Mm-hmm. There might be a trade, but it's mm-hmm. not your trade. Yeah, Like a journaling tool, like all the journaling tools, they have the option to tag your name of the strategy to that trade when you're mm-hmm. journaling it. Yeah. So, okay, I took that trade. This is a five minute opening range break up. Either works or doesn't. But if I take a trade and I say, okay, what was this one? And there's, uh, I don't know, it was a good trade though. I made money. <laughs> yeah, it was a good trade, but that's not the way to consistency. Mm-hmm. You have to know is if this trade fits that. Uh, trade book and every trader i think need the two or three trade books mm-hmm. like you know one counter trend one trend trading yeah and in a different time frame but not a lot like i have three trade books mm-hmm. so i do you know two of them are momentum and one of them is the counter which is a reversal yeah. and that limits your trading mm-hmm. so okay there is you see something is it's obvious that it's gonna work but if you know, i don't have a trade book i don't take it mm-hmm. uh, and makes you con- gives you consistency yeah it's very very important definitely so in terms of the limit of the trading, do you feel like that's a lot, uh, an area where a lot of traders struggle because they have they don't have really good impulse control? So then they might create a playbook mm-hmm. or a trade book and then they just c- can't stick to it because they just they don't have the impulse control to say, okay, I'm gonna stick to, they might only give them free trades for a week mm. versus if they didn't have that trade book or what they're seeing as a trade, 
it's 10 trades in a week. So then because they can't have that self-control, that self-impulse control, they just, they just throw that playbook out the window. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very big issue. Yeah. I'm I'm not uh, setting uh, uh, the limit on the number of the trades that I take. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, I do it on the losing trades. Like mm-hmm. if I take four trades in a day and I get max out of my loss, I get out of it. Maybe mm-hmm. the fifth one is the best one, but I will walk away mm-hmm. because in the long term that helps you. That attitude of walking away helps you. Yes, you know, it's very important because I've had days that I've lost hundred twenty thousand oh, dollars wow. taking like twenty five trades. Wow. Just keeps you know. I've had that mm-hmm. uh, on, on on a company called Neo. Uh, I can't uh, forget that day. So uh, <laughs> that very important. Mm-hmm. So when you're taking, so limit yourself to the trade books mm-hmm. that you have. So I need to see an opening range breakout. Mm-hmm. And if I see it, I'll take it. If I don't see it, I don't take it. Mm-hmm. There are some days that it gives you really good opportunity and you take two, three tra- really good trades. There are some days that you make one really good trade and you make your pr- daily profit. Mm-hmm. Having a daily profit is very important. Also having a daily stop loss also very important. Mm-hmm. So having these two are extremely important. So if you take three trades and all profitable, continue taking your trade if you haven't met your profit target. Mm-hmm. Also, Having a time limit is very important. Mm-hmm. For me, it's, uh, for me, I, maximum that I trade is the first two hours of the market. Yeah. I know I'm not gonna t- trade after 11 a.m., mm-hmm. 100%, no matter what. So do you feel like having these lim- limitations and parameters that you put in place is what leads to that consistency? So when you have the playbook, and then you, you limit the losses, you limit the wins, and then you limit the time that combination is what then can lead to that longevity and that consistency. Absolutely. Like even a diet is like that. You know, mm-hmm. you say, okay, in a diet, I eat this time, this time, and, you know, after this time, I'm not going to have any mm-hmm. more food until they were like, you know, intermittent fasting people that try to have yes. 12 hours, 14 hours. Mm-hmm. Same thing in life, you know, same as trading. How come people not eating 18 meal a day <laughs> just because it doesn't make sense? It's the same as trading. So mm-hmm. why shouldn't you take 18 trades a day? Mm-hmm. Look at it like a diet. You have one breakfast and one lunch, one dinner, mm-hmm. and some people skip the breakfast or something, you know, depending on what works for you, mm-hmm. and just control yourself. And over time, again, got the earlier discussion that we had, that mm-hmm. over time, you build that habit. In food is as trading, yes. same thing, over mm-hmm. time, doesn't happen. Would you say it's like a muscle? Exactly, mm-hmm. muscle memory, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And how would you define yourself as a trader then, in terms of style? Are you a day trader, scalper? I'm a day trader. Mm-hmm. I uh, day trade uh, U.S. stock market, mm-hmm. either to the options or the common shares, mm-hmm. which is very the basic form. I'm not a very sophisticated trader, mm-hmm. but it works perfectly for me. Yeah. And I love a stock market because the time is very limited from 9.30 to 11 a.m. Yeah. And I love it. I don't want to be in the markets that is open 24-7 mm-hmm. like crypto or Forex because it drives me crazy. I don't want to look at my phone all the time. I yeah. love it. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah, I'm a scalper too. My trades usually take two, three minutes uh, maximum. Oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't want to stay all day. Very, very short uh, tr- trader. Mm-hmm. And I think it works perfectly for me. Do you? Would you say that you love trading? You love the markets, but you don't love it enough to like just sit there and you know just constantly be at it? Because I see people, like you said, with the stock and options, you have that ni- nice window where the volatility is there, while with Forex and crypto, and it's just open and the volatility is sort of spread out a little bit more across yeah. different trading sessions. Yeah. But I see traders who, you know, seven days a week, they'll just be on the charts. Now, don't get me wrong, in the learning process, it can be very beneficial. But I see people who have probably gone beyond that process, but they're just doing overkill and it's hurting their P&L. And um, they do it because they say, I love trading, which I get. But then it's harming your trading. I don't know. Have you seen that before? Yeah. I mean, even during the, I think even their practice, uh, it leaves a bad habit of over trading. Mm-hmm. Like even during the practice, I tell people that, you know, don't don't spend too much time. Mm-hmm. The screen time doesn't necessarily make you a better trader because mm-hmm. it, you get into the habit of bad over trading. Mm-hmm. Uh, same as professional athletes. And, you know, just doing exercise, run, 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 mm-hmm. doesn't make you better. You need the recovery. You need diet, you need sleep, mm-hmm. and you need, of course, the, you know, mindset and psychology. You need all of them to become successful. Mm-hmm. So for trading, extra hour is just like, you know, pushing, 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 it doesn't help. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it th- depends on the style. Like, for example, for me, it happened to be a stock market because it was easier and the time was perfect for me in the Pacific time zone. 
you know, I cannot day trade currency because it's much harder in a shorter time frame. Yeah. You know, I have to look at it the higher time frame, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of a choppiness in the overall market. Or crypto, you know, choppy most of the time then becomes volatile. You mm-hmm. know, you don't know when the volatility comes. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be any time, China time, you know, US time, European yeah. time. But in the US stock market, you know the volatility yeah. 95% of the time in the first two hours. So, yeah. And I like that structure on mm-hmm. my day. Um, I love trading. But again, I, I want to st- stay away from it. You know, I don't want it to spend 10 hours. Like Definitely. the food too. I love the food, but I need to, I to stop <laughs> yeah. after a certain time. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And would you say that you're more of a technical trader or do you, you, know, you incorporate? All technical. All technical. All technical. Chart right. patterns and mm-hmm. technical. Uh, I don't bring fundamentals in there. Mm-hmm. And whenever I start thinking about, oh, Apple is a good company. You know, we should know. When we bring the fundamental into that, make mm-hmm. a bad decision. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. All chart patterns for me. Incredible. Incredible. And what inspires you now, though? Because now, obviously, you've reached a level of success with trading. And yes, as you said, like you still have lessons that can be learned. Um, but what inspires you now? What allows you to keep working and moving forward and, and trying to grow? So what I inspires me is I want to build a really, really good uh, education, educational platform mm-hmm. for new traders. Mm-hmm. And a really nice website that helped them through the process. Because mm-hmm. I really think financial market is an amazing thing that people should benefit from it mm-hmm. but at the same time it's a very very dangerous thing mm-hmm. so i want to be help uh, people to be one of the people that help traders mm-hmm. of course we are not the only one but we're building tradingterminal.com mm-hmm. we're building a simulator we're building a replay we're building an education and the process of building and creating is very interesting for me yeah. and I, I, every morning that we wake up with my partner i want we want to see how we can add it better into that mm. And that's what that's what I love. We lost a lot of money building this stuff, <laughs> especially the train terminal. It's very expensive, but the process of building it has been very interesting. Mm-hmm. The creation overall is very Maybe interesting. Enjoying it. Yeah, very enjoyable. Yeah. The creating new things. Mm-hmm. Would you say that you bring in sort of that engineer's mind to it as well? Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. Try to build. Try to optimize mm-hmm. something. Make it better every mm-hmm. day. Do you have like an idea of when that will be ready or launched? Uh, the tradingterminal.com is launched right mm-hmm. now. Uh, we have uh, many tools in there. Uh, but we're just planning to keep adding in that. Oh, at, cool. this mo- at this moment, the, you know, October 2023, it's free. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we can add more tools on that. Maybe we can put a price on it and mm-hmm. uh, as a subscription model. We don't know yet, but mm-hmm. I think this year, at least in 2023, would be free. I don't know when this podcast is coming mm-hmm. out, but uh, we hope that we just keep adding value into that. Oh, and maybe one day we'll stop it, I don't know. Hopefully not, but uh, it's also a project that uh, we don't know exactly just where we will take it. it, yeah. Definitely. And, um, like you just talked about travel, you know, where whereabouts have you traveled in the world or like where's like a top location that you would say? Uh, every place that I've been there mm-hmm. uh, has their own uh, amazing uh, features. Like, yeah. you know, if I want to pick one country that I think everybody should visit, I think it would say, I would say Nepal, Nepal. which is uh, obviously Everest is in there, Himalayas mm-hmm. in there, there's a lot of man. I love that country. I've been there many times. It's addictive. Wow. Like the people and the food and the scenery is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I've been to South America pretty much many times and I love that, the, you know, the food, the culture, the beauty. I've been to Europe. I love Europe in a different way. I've mm-hmm. been to Asia Pacific. I love it. Japan. Uh, but again, each country has their own thing. Yeah. Uh, traveling is my passion because I want to see how people live. Mm-hmm. Different time of the year, different part of the world. What do they eat? How mm-hmm. do they celebrate? I love it. Um, uh, but I select mountain, mm-hmm. mountain place mostly. Like I want to go to the <laughs> exactly, mountain. Exactly, I can imagine. Yeah, because I like to climb mountains. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the way of, for me to see the country plus get the culture. Yeah. Like I'd like to go to, like if the country doesn't have any mountain, like Brazil, I haven't been to Brazil because there's not, there's no mountain there. Like it's not my hot top priority. Yeah, yeah. Def- definitely. <laughs> but I've been to Argentina, Argentina and Chile many times because mm-hmm. there are big mountains there. Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, before you had moved from Iran to Canada, had you traveled much before that point? No, because uh, it was very difficult and it's still very difficult to travel with the Iranian passport. Yes, I So imagine. when I became Canadian citizen, I said, hey, let's go. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's easy. Mm-hmm. And what was it about traveling? What's it done for you? Because you know, I, I know a lot of people, which surprised me, um, that I don't even have a passport. Yeah, and they're from the UK. So not even like they're from yeah. somewhere where it's difficult to travel. They're from like the UK. So their passport can pretty much go anywhere. And yet they still don't have one and they don't plan on traveling and they don't really feel an urge to travel at all. And to me, it's ludicrous. I know everyone's different, but to mm-hmm. me, it's like, that's crazy. Like yeah, the, the the growth you get just from traveling in terms of observing cultures, et cetera, it's done wonders for me. So like, 
you know, what's it done for you, tra- being able to travel and see different parts of the world? Uh, that's a very good point. I've seen a lot of people that have no passport as well. I think it made me more savvy about trading. Mm. Like when I go traveling, it's wow, it's amazing. Okay, I want to go there too. And I want to go there too. I want to go there too. Okay, how can I travel so much? Is I, I want to become a trader. Mm-hmm. One of the, the reasons that I actually became a really good trader, a lot of people are asking me, is that how, how did you survive the games? Because I really wanted this lifestyle. Mm. I was really, really excited about this lifestyle. And traveling, like every, like I'm in Dubai, and you know, on Tuesday I want to fly to Europe, and from Europe I want to go to another country. And the only way that I can do it is trading. So I need to become a better trader. Mm. I need to, you know, practice better. I need to, you know, kind of discipline because. Traveling uh, is my passion. But as you mentioned is, uh, you know, you see the world, there's so much to see. There is mm-hmm. amazing cultures, amazing food, and the way that, uh, you know, people are living in this planet is amazing. And mm-hmm. uh, it just motivates me in life and uh, has been a passion for me always. Definitely, no, definitely. And you know, as you mentioned there about, you know, the passion was actually the travels, for example. You know, a lot of people say they're passionate about trading when a lot of the time it's the money that they're actually passionate about, which is fair enough because obviously we do a lot. You know, there's not a lot of things we won't do for, you know, unless we were getting paid for it. Right. But I feel a lot of people, their passion is just the money side. And therefore, they really struggle in trading because at the end of the day, when you are trading, you're going to lose money. So if they're only passionate about money, when they lose money, what happens? That's when they lose their their, their senses, you know. Um, but. Do you believe that you have to have a passion for trading as well, yeah. as well as money? Uh, you need to actually enjoy the art of trading, the style of trading, the uh, the principles of trading to be successful at it? Uh, 100%. I mm-hmm. think you have to be fascinated by the financial market mm-hmm. itself. What's happening there? I want to I wanna figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. Having the passion toward trading itself mm-hmm. Uh, it's very important. Like an engineer, like everybody, like any job, like your doc- doctor. If you want to be a doctor to make money, but you hate blood and hospital mm. and stuff, you know, are you going to do that or are you going to enjoy doing this or no? But you have to have the passion toward mm. that the, the field that you're doing as well. Mm. Same as trading. You have to be passionate. If you are a crypto trader, understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Read the white paper of the Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Read the white paper of Solana and see what is this blockchain about? Mm-hmm. What are they trying to do? You don't need to make it anything to do about it. Be passionate about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm always in Wikipedia figuring out what is this and what is that mm-hmm. the, about the things that I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. And that's how you actually get the energy on the bad days. Yes. You know, you d- start dissociating money from the activity mm-hmm. of your career. Definitely. Definitely. Hopefully people take note of that. And uh, one thing you just mentioned there as well in regards to traveling, right? Uh, and having the freedom, you obviously trade as you travel. How, what, what challenges you have you had with that though? Because obviously different time zones, you know, and you know, you, sometimes you might be only traveling like here in Dubai, you're only here for a few days, you know? So what challenges have you faced through trading and traveling? Most of them is a reliable Wi-Fi. Like I was <laughs> yeah. in Vietnam um, last week, mm-hmm. uh, today's Sunday, yeah, last week I was in Vietnam. And I had reliable internet only for two days. Oh. The the other three days, I just couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. The day da- I had good Wi-Fi, but the data wasn't loading. Like I couldn't, I can't trade like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, time zone is a big thing as well, la- because uh, when I travel, I don't travel just to trade. I travel to see other things and you know go yes. hiking and climbing. Mm-hmm. And by the time that I come, or I'm in the road and I'm climbing, and then market opens, and mm-hmm. I miss that two hours. Uh, but I try usually to schedule my time around uh, yeah. that I'd be available. Like mm-hmm. if I'm in Europe, market opens usually 2, 3 in the afternoon. I try to wake up a little bit early, do my stuff, mm-hmm. come back by 3 p.m., trade, and then go for dinner. Uh, or if I'm in Asia, I try to do everything and finish it by time, uh, you know, till market opens later in the okay. evening and then go to bed right away. Okay, so it's just like scheduling and then also, you know, understanding what's in your control and what's not. It was in control. The Definitely. Wi-Fi is very tricky because it has a lot of uh, hit and miss. Like I've been to Ritz Carlton, the best hotels mm. and horrible Wi-Fi. Wow. Very expensive hotels. And I've been to some hostels in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> literally nowhere. And I had an amazing... Super fast Wi-Fi. Super fast Wi-Fi. <laughs> like, well, I, I don't understand that. Like, there's no correlation. There's, there's there no is no correlation. Like, it's, oh, I'm going to go to the best hotels to make sure the Wi-Fi... Well, that, that doesn't happen all the time. So, mm-hmm. you know... I've been to somewhere it doesn't even connect. Like, yeah. I can't... Not even bad <laughs> Wi-Fi. It won't even connect to my laptop. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's fun. But um, we're coming up to the last few minutes here. So what we like to do is like quick fire questions which is um, just there's one reoccurring one, which is um, if you could meet anyone from the past or present, famous or not, just to spend time with, who would it be and why? 
Well, there is a uh, there is a very famous Persian poet back uh, about a thousand years ago. His name is Khayyam. Okay. Uh, so he was a poet and also a mati- uh, mathematician. Okay. And I really wanted to go see, see him because th- 1,000 years ago, he started doing some algebra there. I was amazed when mm-hmm. I was reading about it. How could you do the kind of things 1,000 years ago? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and he was also an astronaut. He did some astronaut. Khayyam would be the person that I would love wow. to visit if I had a time machine. I like that. I like that. A very unique answer. You know, a lot of people just, I think they're on the spot. They're like, Elon Musk. Yeah. Uh, We've had Elon Musk like five, six times, but I, I appreciate I that. I think he was the Elon Musk of his time. Like, again, it, it was a very like dark it, yeah. time in those times, but mm-hmm. he, the things that he did, the poetry and the mathematicians, mm-hmm. unbelievable. I want to see that guy. It's and he lived like yeah. 75 years. Like, wow. it, that's a long, uh, back, then, yeah. old, in back then, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. No, thank you. And then I'll finish with this one. Like, what would be your top three tips for traders right now who are still on their journey? So uh, they may be in the beginning or sort of middle phase where they haven't got that consistency yet. Trade in a simulator at least three months. Mm. Build a couple of trade books, just print it, like have name on it, rules step by step, have it next to your know, desk, have that like a handbook. Mm-hmm. You don't need to read them every time to take a trade, but building it, process of building it is just makes that muscle memory. Mm-hmm. Have that trade book. By the time that you build it and write it and print it, you're already a master of mm-hmm. that strategy. Having that, plan trade the small share size. Yeah. Very important, trade the small share size. Mm-hmm. I think I would say these three. Definitely. Trade in a simulator, build trade books, and trade the small share size. Definitely, and then build it from there. Yeah. Perfect. Andrew, it's been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate you uh, coming on, first of all, and I'm excited for our next episode as well. And well, everyone, make sure you check the links for Andrew in the description below. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe as well. At this point, when this was recorded, we're on like 83,000 subscribers. and. Uh, I'm not sure when it will come out, but hopefully we'll be closing in on that 100K subscribers, which is thanks to all of you as well as our incredible guests as well. So thank you all. And until next time, take care.